Hi fellow research enthusiasts, I am Ms. Angel V. Corbelian, a grade school math faculty. And this is my study, Improving Problem-Solving Performance Through Varied Teaching Approaches, a Meta-Analysis. And these are the contents of my presentation. Over the past years in my teaching career, I have seen and observed that problem-solving is one of the skills that my pupils need to improve and also I think this is also true to most Filipino learners some likes math but most hate or dislike it what inspired me to conduct this study and also my objective or goal is to help the pupils improve their problem-solving performance as well as the teachers in preparing their lessons and materials practitioners curriculum developers seminar workshops organizers and parents I was also alarmed by the data given by teams, Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, and PISA, Program for International Student Assessment, of the performance of the Filipino learners compared to other countries. Sad to note that we are very far behind other Asian countries in terms of quality education, and one of the top countries actually is Singapore. Luckily, DLSD adopted the Singapore math curriculum years ago in order to help or give the best quality education to our learners. There are lots of studies already that focus on the different learning interventions or approaches, but there are only few studies that use meta-analysis to summarize the data and findings. I adapted the Gene Glass meta-analysis technique. Meta-analysis is the analysis of the analysis. And according to Kalayan and Kasim in 2008 and Maximovic in 2011, it summarizes the findings and results of the researchers with the same kind of topics or interest. Here are some of the related literature in terms of mathematical problem-solving performance. According to Zen and Cook in 2011, problem-solving is one of the areas in mathematics that requires students to analyze, transfer words into mathematical equations or representation. And from the DepEd K-12 Math Guide 2016, in the Philippine curriculum, problem-solving is one of the twin goals of mathematics in basic education. And according to Marzano 2014, in order to solve the problems, the learners need to know the process of problem-solving to come up with varied solutions. This is my conceptual framework. The purpose of my study is to describe the methodological characteristic and substantive characteristics and to determine the effect size of the teaching approaches or effective strategies when grouped according to methodological characteristics and substantive characteristics. The methodological characteristics include the research design, level and number of participants, and sampling techniques while the substantive characteristics is the research findings of the different researches on which teaching approaches or strategies is best for effective in improving problem-solving performance in math. On the other hand, my study will not be complete without the computation of the effect size. Effect size indicates the direction and reflects the magnitude or the strength of the teaching approaches. It can yield a positive or a negative effect or significance. And this is my research question. What is the best or most effective teaching approach to use in improving students' problem-solving performance? For my methodology, for my research design, I use a descriptive documentary analysis method using glass meta-analysis technique. For the selection and inclusion criteria for the meta-analysis, I use purposive sampling, and there were 43 experimental studies, both unpublished and published online dissertations Thesis and journal articles from 2002 and 2017 were included in my study. And these are the criteria that I use to select which study to be included in the meta-analysis. For the research instruments, I use research summary form. It has three parts and I also use research summary survey results. For the data gathering procedure, I use the following um, process or steps. First, identification of relevant researches, setting the inclusion criteria, and coding. For the data analysis, I use descriptive statistics, means of frequencies and percentages, and the effect size was computed using the GLASS formula. Okay, for the results and discussions, 
In terms of methodological characteristics according to research design, the pie chart shows that most of the studies reviewed utilize the predisposed design, with a frequency of 40 or 93%. According to level of participants, the pie chart shows that among the level of participants, secondary students with an age range of 12 to 18 years, as the respondents have the highest frequency of 27 or 63 percent. And according to number of participants, the pie chart shows that among the reviewed studies, 29 had a sample size ranging from 1 to 80, that's 63 percent. And according to sampling techniques, the result shows that most of the reviewed studies included the meta-analysis done used simple random sampling technique. There were 23 studies or 54% used this technique. And in terms of substantive characteristics, in terms of effective teaching strategy or teaching approaches, the pie chart shows that the different teaching approaches included in the study, there are 14 or 32% reviewed studies used technology-oriented approach. There were 11 or 26% use problem-solving heuristics approach. There are 10 studies that use um, practical work approach. And there were 8 studies or 19% use cooperative learning approach. For the interpretation of the effect size, I use Glass and Cohen's interpretation. They use three criteria, but Sawilowski modified it by adding three more criteria to better interpret larger effect sizes. Okay, for the results on the effect size and research design, it reveals that Solomon Fair Group design has a huge mean effect size of 2.51 based on Sawilowski's interpretation. This means that Solomon Fair Group design is significantly the highest among the other research designs included in the study. A huge effect means the Solomon Fair Group design is very significant. Results on effect size and level of participants reveal that secondary students have a very large mean effect size of 1.48 based on Sawilowski's interpretation. This implies that the mean effect size of secondary pupils is highly significant and also signifies that the performance of the secondary students in the experimental group has a high difference than the performance of the students in the control group. It can also be noted that the effect of the teaching approaches can be seen comparably in the secondary level. Effect size and the number of participants, it can be uh, gleaned that it can be shown that all have a uh, large and a very large um, significance in terms of the effect sizes. However, the number of participants ranging from 161 to 240 has a very large effect size of 1.45. It can be noted that the effect of the teaching approaches in improving the students' problem-solving performance is highly significant. Effect size and sampling techniques, as you can see, simple random sampling technique has a very large mean effect size of 1.51 based on Sawilowski's interpretation. But based on the findings and the related meta-analysis, it can be gleaned that the kind of sampling technique used is not a factor that contributes to the effect of teaching approaches on the problem-solving performance of the pupils in math. However, this result may be an input to the researchers on deciding what kind of sampling technique they can use or adapt in their study. Effect size and the teaching approaches. As you can see, results reveal that among the teaching approaches, cooperative learning approach has a very large effect size of 1.46. Based on Sawilowski's interpretation, it means that the cooperative learning approach has a higher significance on the problem-solving performance of the pupils. However, as you can see, technology-oriented approach, practical work approach, and problem-solving heuristic approach, they also have a large mean effect sizes. It means that they have also a high significance on the problem-solving performance of the pupils. For my conclusions in conducting an experiment to improve the problem-solving performance of students, the methodology that includes the research design, level and number of participants, and sampling technique to be considered would impact the validity of the results. However, beyond the experiment, the qualitative study may also be considered for deeper analysis of results. The four different teaching approaches have their own impact on the problem-solving performance of the pupils. While the use of the cooperative learning approach would yield the greatest impact, the technology-oriented approach, practical work approach, and problem-solving heuristic approach could also help the students to improve their problem-solving performance. Therefore, 
these approaches may be used as alternatives in teaching mathematics. For my recommendations, cooperative learning approach may be used more frequently in mathematics classroom as well as the other approaches. Curriculum writers, developers use the findings or can use the findings of this study to evaluate, improve, and enrich the existing curriculum in the school by incorporating the use of the four different teaching approaches. And future researchers conducting experimental studies may consider using Solomon for group design as the design of their studies, secondary level as their level of participants, 161 to 240 participants as their sample size, and simple random sample technique as their sample technique. They may also include preschool pupils as their participants in conducting experimental studies. And last, for my recommendations, a meta-analysis on the different teaching approaches across the other disciplines such as science, English, Filipino, music, arts, and PE, and social studies may also be considered. A similar study may also be conducted utilizing other meta-analysis techniques and increase the number of studies to be included in the meta-analysis. For my implications, mathematics is one of the most challenging subjects for students. Most teachers are aware of it. In the study of Shepu in 2013, he mentioned that mathematics is a requirement for various jobs in every discipline and it's a core subject in basic educational setting. Hence, learning mathematics using different approaches prepares the students to be good in solving problems in their daily lives. The four teaching approaches yielded significant or positive effects, which means that the students in the experimental group or those who had a treatment outperformed those students who are in the control group. The reason for the increase of students' achievement and or performance is due to the following. Students' participation in the discussion. Students are using manipulatives to gain a conceptual understanding. Students are using different online applications and other related computer-based instruction, assisted instruction and students are using different problem-solving heuristics. In teaching mathematical concepts to use, the use of cooperative learning approach gives more time and opportunities for students to solve problems, form solutions, justify, argue or comment, and help each other improve their output. The meta-analysis done also revealed that problem-solving heuristics has a positive effect on the problem-solving performance of the students. It means that it is a more effective method of instruction for teaching and learning math as compared to traditional or lecture method. Hence, mathematics teachers may use problem-solving heuristics such as Polis strategy, Singapore math model drawing, bar modeling, Rust Belt strategy, and other mentioned problem-solving heuristics included in the meta-analysis study. With regard to technology-oriented approach, teachers, instructors all over the world are applying technology as a tool and aid to instruction. Hence, teachers, instructors are encouraged to use different e-learning platforms such as social media apps and other computer programs to help their pupils succeed. Meanwhile, it was also revealed in the meta-analysis done that practical work approach has a positive effect on the problem-solving performance of the pupils. Coco in 2008 cited that Practical work approach helps the learners to find out information and understand concepts through appropriate activities and demonstration. Moreover, with the trends and changes happening in the K-12 curriculum and the type of students that are being catered today, all these teaching approaches can be applied in the teaching instruction even if we are having online distance learning. Alright, so these are my appendices. And my references, some of my references. Okay, so to end my presentation, I'd like to quote this from St. John Baptist de La Salle. To be entrusted with the teaching of the young is a great gift and grace of God. Thank you very much for listening and God bless you all.